The game of hockey dates all the way back to the late 1800s, where Canadians had to make use of the winter months, and of course we had ample ice surfaces spanning across the entire country. And with the rise of hockey also comes the fundamental rules of the game. And there's been just many absurd rules throughout the entire history of the game, but on the other hand, many of these fundamental rules, such as shooting an object into the net, has lived through many generations. And there has been many modifications to these rules, like the allowance of raising a puck versus keeping it on the ice, but some rules live on. And some rules, if not every rule, needs to be changed over time, especially in this modern day NHL game, where we're kind of struggling to find that balance between technology and human decisions. And with the growing concerns of head injuries, there's been many drastic changes not only to the rules, but just to the culture of the physical contact in this league. In this graph, we see the amount of fights spanning from the 2008-2009 season, and the player at each point is the player who actually led the entire league in penalty minutes that season. In the 2008-2009 season, there were 734 fights through the entirety of that season. Three years later, in the 2011-2012 season, there was 546 fights, so a 35% decrease in the total amount of fights. Five years later, there's 372 fights, so a 32% decrease, so it kind of started to plateau within those five years. And fast forward to last season, there was a dismal 238 fights throughout the entire 2018-2019 season. And so we saw a 36% decrease in only two years, and an astounding 210% decrease since 2008-2009, which is just crazy. And according to these stats, in the 2008-2009 season, we would see a fight nearly every single second game. And today, we are lucky to see a fight every single eight games, which is just, again, crazy. Now, personally, I don't necessarily agree with this change, especially when you consider that 95% of concussions are not from fights. But these stats are just drastic and just pretty crazy when you actually see them, I guess, visualized on a graph. In today's video, we're going to go over nine players who single-handedly forced a rule change because they exposed a massive flaw within the current system. Or at the very least, they were a large factor who kind of forced that tipping point. So comment down below the biggest rule changes that you can think of, and make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome hockey content. Guys, thank you guys so much for all the support. I appreciate it so, so much. We will start with perhaps one of the most controversial rule changes in the modern NHL game. Flashback to February 13th, 2013. The Colorado Avalanche were facing against the Nashville Predators, and Matt Duchesne goes about six feet offside right in front of the ref. And he would then go on a breakaway and score. And just the sheer movement of Duchesne is what makes this play just so outrageous. He's so far ahead of the pass. He's in the Predators zone, looking literally behind him, right in front of the ref. And the Colorado Avalanche actually ended up winning that game by only one goal and the final score of 6-5. So that's what really just pushed this example over the edge. And this play was a huge example and was the play that really triggered the ripple effect to what we know today as the Coach's Challenge. Because the Matt Duchesne offside goal is just a perfect example of how a coach's challenge can mitigate these massive missed calls. And these missed calls are very important to catch, especially in today's game, where you know if you lose that game, it can make a massive difference when the standings are really close. However, after the coach's challenge was actually put in effect, it has become one of the most controversial rule changes in the entire NHL. Because the player will be offside by what seems to be only centimeters, and the goal will be disallowed. And on top of that, refs in Toronto will have to make very subjective decisions about puck control, you know, puck possession, and it's, it walks a very fine line of just creating a lot of frustration. But again, without it, the odd massive miss call can seriously affect teams in a negative way. Because in 2017, we actually had another Colorado Avalanche incident where they had a goal that was incorrectly disallowed when it should have been a goal. And this non-goal had serious consequences because the Abs nearly missed the playoffs this season by a single point. So again, you know, if they would have missed the playoffs, that would have just been a gong show because, you know, that's a huge factor and those owners are going to be really mad if they're not going to make the playoffs and this can be tied to a single disallowed goal. And these potential season-ending missed goals have created a huge dilemma in the NHL. They're becoming pretty necessary, but at the same time have taken away a lot from the game. How do you guys feel about them? Comment down below what you feel like for the coach's challenge. Next, we have the Brad Marchand incident. And I know what you're thinking. Which one? Well, for this Brad Marchand incident, we have to go all the way back to the 2018 playoffs. During a scrum, Brad Marchand receives a right hook from Ryan Callahan. And what does Brad do? What do you think Brad does? Well, Brad licks Ryan Callahan. Brad Marchand licks Ryan Callahan in a playoff game. Now, this incident technically falls under gross misconduct. 
However, this type of penalty was actually getting phased out of the game at this point, and technically it could fall under unsportsmanlike penalty. But again, this is kind of a gray area, and especially becomes way harder when the refs are making a subjective call in a playoff game. So instead, the NHL, after multiple occurrences, had to step in and clarify this action should not exist, obviously, and they ended up declaring this under multiple calls as they're trying to remove this gray area from the game. Next, we have another massive change to the way the NHL can utilize our current technologies. In the 2018-2019 playoffs, the San Jose Sharks were in a Game 7 situation against the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And this, of course, was a very intense matchup as the Knights were on track for yet again another very successful playoff run. However, at the midpoint of the third period, the Knights were actually up 3 to nothing on the verge of advancing to the next round. And Cody Egan off a face-off would cross-check Joe Pavelski, who would bounce off another player, hit his head, and Pavelski would need to be ushered off the ice. And on this play, Cody Egan was given a 5-minute major penalty. And this situation was very controversial, because to be honest, this should not have gotten a 5-minute major. But hey, it's alright though, because they're up 3 nothing. And then it happens, one of the craziest turn of events in the NHL playoff history. The San Jose Sharks in Game 7 down 3-0 would score 4 unanswered goals on the 5 minute power play and they would eventually win 5-4 in overtime. And because of this it actually sparked an entirely new rule creation where all major penalties and match penalties must be confirmed through video review before assessing the actual penalty. And this was a very extreme example where without this rule, the Knights were sent out of the playoffs on what could have been another storybook win. Next, we have a player that single-handedly changed the way teams are allowed to structure their contracts. Roberto Luongo, originally drafted by the New York Islanders, was traded to the Florida Panthers, who was then traded to the Vancouver Canucks. And Luongo would make a prolific impact on struggling Canucks team, as he'd single-handedly carry them to the playoffs and had just many extremely impressive seasons. And Luongo is quite possibly one of the best goalies in NHL history to have not won a Vezna. As Luongo was actually a top Vezina candidate over 10 times in his career, but he was never able to make it over the hump. And because of this, and the fact that Roberto Luongo was literally the captain of the Vancouver Canucks, a, a goalie, Luongo would go on to sign one of the biggest contracts in the entire NHL at the time. $65 million spanning over 12 years. And Luongo's contract was really just a strategic play to lower his annual AAV, and this contract would really just blow up in Mike Gilsa's face, spawning the famous, my contract sucks quote. And of course, this contract would go on to age just terribly as the Canucks were handcuffed on sending him to the Florida Panthers for Jacob Markstrom. Which I mean, Jacob Markstrom has aged pretty well. But the league took a look at this just ridiculous contract. And in the next CBA, they restricted contract terms for 8 years for re-signs and 7 years for free agents. And on top of all this, because the Longo retired early, the Canucks received a $3 million cap recapture penalty for the next 3 seasons. Next, we have probably one of the most iconic real creations in the history of the NHL. During a 2008 playoff game, the Devils were facing the New York Rangers, and at that time, Sean Avery and Martin Brodeur were known for their crazy net front battles. And during this game, Sean Avery would think of a loophole that would single-handedly spawn the creation of a new rule. As Avery was trying to be a pest in front of the net and cause a distraction, but he really didn't want to take a penalty. So instead, Avery stared directly in the eyes of Brodeur with his back facing the blue line and waved his stick frantically in the face of Brodeur. And of course his action would rattle Brodeur, it would confuse the refs, and the chair on top is that Sean Avery would then bury a goal shortly after. And the crazy thing about the situation is, up until this point, there was just no penalty that could have been given out for this action. The refs were trying to think of something, but they couldn't. Because there was actually no particular rule that directly applied to waving a stick in front of another player's face. And because of this, NHL would have to take instant action and modify the existing unsportsmanlike contact rule. And they made sure this rule also included waving your stick in the face of your opponent. And if you guys want to hear Sean, Avery, and Scott Gomez talk about it, go check out the Spit and Chicklets podcast clip. It is just absolutely hilarious. Next, we have not a player, but a franchise who would force a fundamental change on the entire league. And this change would directly and indirectly affect every single team in the NHL. The year is 2010. The Edmonton Oilers have finished last place in the NHL and would be awarded the first overall pick to draft Taylor Hall. The year is 2011. The Edmonton Oilers have finished last place and they would draft Ryan Nugent Hopkins. The year is 2012. The Edmonton Oilers have finished second last place but would still get the first overall pick to draft Neil Yakupov. And next, the year is 2015. Third last and somehow yet again, they win the first overall pick and who they draft, of course, Connor McDavid. The NHL at this point was of course getting very upset that the Oilers just kept winning draft lottery upon draft lottery. 
Even though this was out of the Oilers' control, people were still getting upset that they were getting so, so lucky. So in the 2016 season, the NHL would implement a massive change that would put bottom teams at less odds of winning that first overall pick to take away the chances of this Edmonton Oilers incident from ever happening again in NHL history. And now with their current draft lottery odds, it has actually created a more anti-tank mentality where you can't necessarily finish last and get guaranteed that top three pick. Because since the rule change, many of the teams who actually finished dead last have not actually won the first overall pick. Next, we have another player who found a glaring loophole in the rule book. In the 2014-2015 season, David Leggio, who's playing for the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, was faced with a serious dilemma. Two of his opponents were coming down on a 2-0 with not a single teammate in sight, and David would do the unthinkable. Instead of facing a shot that had a high chance of going in, he turned around and shoved the entire net off the pegs onto the ice, which would force the refs to blow down the play. Now, he would face consequences as other teams would be handed a penalty shot, but he knew he would have a far better chance on a penalty shot versus a 2-1-0. And the chair on top is that Legio would actually make a save on this penalty shot, and the league would have to act very fast on this embarrassing moment. And so they implemented a new rule change that would, for one, give the goalie a game misconduct, and number two, it actually let the captain of the opposing team choose any player that was on the ice to take the penalty shot. And Legio being the legend that he is, he would actually do this a couple years later in the DEL. And last, we have a more positive rule change. In 2015, John Scott was playing for the Arizona Coyotes. And through a massive fan movement, the entire NHL fan base voted John Scott into the 2016 All-Star Game. But then it happened. John Scott was traded to the Montreal Canadiens and was there for a single game and then was shipped down to the AHL. And so the NHL was in a conundrum. John Scott, the most unlikely All-Star in the history of the NHL, was in the AHL and therefore he was not allowed to play in the NHL All-Star Game. And considering that there was such a massive fan movement that actually got him into the All-Star game, this was not a great look and it actually upset many, many fans when the NHL announced that he was in fact not allowed to participate in the 2016 NHL All-Star game. However, because of massive pushback, the NHL allowed John Scott to participate in this game. And the best part about this story is that John Scott in the Pacific Division won the All-Star tournament and he also took home the All-Star MVP award. Just amazing. As more game-changing technology keeps getting introduced, and as the entire culture of hockey shifts, we're gonna to continue to see more rules come and go, which will of course continue to have a drastic impact upon the game, some good, and many that are controversial. Anyways guys, what are some of the craziest rules that you can think of? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, make sure to hit the subscribe button for some more awesome hockey content. Anyways guys, again, thank you guys so much for watching. The support has just been amazing. See you guys later.